Yo, what's good? Let's talk about what separates famous producers from the rest of us. That's my remake of one of Don Diablo's new tracks and I think it's a great example of the point I'm trying to make. But first, if you watched my last video, you'd know I was giving away these $500 pair of headphones to one of you guys. I randomly selected someone that took my new music production course and the winner is Daniel Thompson. He goes by the artist named Geovac. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but congrats, man. I'm gonna ship the headphones out to you today. And if you missed my last video, I announced that my first ever music production course is live at bigzcourses.com. So check that out if you're interested in investing in your music production skills. Anyway, we were talking about what separates big producers from the rest of us. And I think it's the little details. Here's what that Don Diablo synth sounds like by itself. If I just take away a few small details, then it starts to sound a lot less professional. So in this video, I just wanna talk about a couple things that famous producers do to take their sounds to the next level. The first thing I've noticed that a lot of big artists do is they use pitch imperfections to give their sounds more character. By pitch imperfections, I literally just mean f up the pitch of the sound a little bit so it doesn't sound so perfect. A great way to do this in any synth is pick a crazy looking LFO. So in the Serum LFO presets, there's this setting called a bit crazy that looks like that. And what I'm gonna do is just map that to the fine pitch of the oscillator. So obviously that doesn't sound good at all, but we're gonna make it a lot more subtle. So there I've set it so the pitch can't go up or down more than 10 cents. It's subtle, but it helps the sound become a little more natural. And if you notice in the corner down here, I have the pitch bend range set to an octave. That's gonna allow me to mess with the pitch even more. So I'm gonna go into the MIDI file for this melody, go to the automation settings and select pitch bend. So I'm just gonna pick a note here and just mess up the pitch a little bit. So this isn't a typical pitch bend where you're sliding the pitch of one note into the next note. This is more about just picking a couple notes to screw up, but in a way that sounds cool. Here's what it sounds like when it's done to a few more notes. The second thing I notice a lot of big producers doing is making sure their sounds aren't too clean. See if you can hear the difference between the first half and the second half. What I was doing in the second half was just adding two little effects to make it sound dirtier. So I'm adding some saturation with Fab Filter Saturn. I'll turn the mix down and then turn it up. And the great thing about this plugin is you can open up different bands and saturate different frequency ranges differently. Like in this case, I'm adding a lot more saturation to the high end than I am down here to the low end. And the other thing I'm doing is just adding a tiny bit of bit crusher. But this video is all about the small details and I think bit crusher can sound bad when you overdo it. So I just have the mix at like 20%. It's really subtle. But I think adding just those two things goes a long way to help it sound more professional. The third thing I notice a lot of big producers doing is what I like to call accent layers. An accent layer is when you add in a new layer, but only for a few notes, not the entire melody. So in this track here, the added notes from the accent layer. If I play the new layer by itself, you'll see it's mostly just one note. Which is funny, but it adds such a nice depth to the overall track. So anytime you feel like you wanna emphasize a couple notes in your melody, try bringing in a new layer for those notes. Now for the last little detail that I think big producers are good at, which is controlling the space. And by space, I just mean reverb and delay. 
Those are the main tools you have to put your sound in a different space. So first in this sound, I have a really short reverb. I'll turn it on and off so you can hear the difference. So this reverb puts the synth in a little room, but it's really short, so the space is still controlled. But then we can use a send track to get a bigger reverb on the sound. So I have bus one down here set up with this bigger reverb on it. So obviously that sounds really bad right now, but we're gonna get it under control. So after the reverb on the send track, I always put an EQ. Then after the EQ, I have a compressor that's side-chaining the reverb to the synth signal. But this still sounds completely out of control, but I wanted this huge reverb so I could just bring it in at certain moments. So the most important part of all of this is at the end of the chain, I have this gain plugin. And with this gain plugin, I can just choose certain parts to move the gain up and bring the reverb in. That's all just from automating the gain of the reverb. It sounds a lot cooler than just having that short reverb on it the whole time. The subtle changes you can make really add up to a big result in the end. And if you wanna know how to make that synth sound and also this other one, I've left a free download link below to get the presets, the screenshots of the processing, the drum samples, and the project file if you want that. And make sure to check out my new music production course at BigZCourses.com. Peace.